All right, so the first problem, I'm gonna go ahead and walk through um, question number one with you, and then a couple other ones. The first one is three and one-fifth minus two and one-sixth. Remember the very first thing that we need to do here is to find our common denominator. And I also like to write mine, especially with subtraction, vertically. So I've got those place values. So I'm gonna have three and one-fifth minus two and one-sixth. All right, I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna do my ratio table. So I have my times one, which was five and six. My two times is 10 and 12. My three times. Okay, so I went ahead and did my ratio table over here on the side. And we notice that our common denominator is what? Yes, it's going to be 30. I find 30 on both sides. All right, so I check by 5 times what gave me the common denominator of 30. That's 6. So whatever I do to the, numerate, the denominator, I have to do to the numerator. So 1 times 6 is 6. And then I do the same thing over here. What did I do to 1 sixth? So they got that common denominator of 30. Well, I multiplied my denominator by 5, so my numerator also gets multiplied by 5. 1 times 5 is 5. Now I can subtract. And remember, I like to kind of cross out my um, the math that I did just so I don't get confused. All right. 6 minus 5, and we know that our denominator is going to stay the same. So it's going to stay 30. So 6 minus 5 is 1. Now I can go over to my whole number over here. And 3 minus 2 is 1. So my answer becomes 1 and 1 30th. All right, your second problem is 3 and 6 eighths plus 3 and 9 tenths. Um, make sure that you're following along with me as I'm doing this. All right, very first thing that we need to do, I'm going to rewrite it, and I'm going to find my, that's right, common denominator. I'm going to find that common de denominator by doing a ratio table. I'm going to pause and create that ratio table. I would like you to do that. Then you can check and see if yours matches mine. All right, so I hope you created your ratio table, and you'll notice that the common denominator is going to be what number? That's right, it's going to be 40. Some of you may have thought, oh, it's going to be 80. But guess what? We don't have to go all the way to 80 because 8 times 5 is 40 and 10 times 4 is 40. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and do my conversion over here. So I have 6 eighths, and I'm going to multiply. Remember that we had 8 times 5. So it took that 8 times 5. That gave me that common denominator of 40. So whatever I do the denominator, I have to do the numerator. 6 times 5 is, that's right, 30. And what did we do to our 9 tenths to get that common denominator of 40? Yep, we took 9 tenths. We multiplied it by 4 over 4 because whatever I do to the denominator, I have to do to the numerator. That's right. You guys are going to memorize that. All right, so I have 30 plus 40, and I'm going to cross what I just did out so that I don't get confused. And we know that our common denominator is 40, so that's going to stay the same. And now I can just take 30 plus 36. That's going to give me 66. And now I'm going to add my whole number. I have 6. My answer is 6 and 66 fortieths, or let's see. See if you can figure it out, and then come back. All right, when we take that improper fraction and we change it, we get 1 and 26 fortieths. So that means that our answer is 7 and 26 fortieths. And for those of you that like to reduce to the lowest common, uh, simplest form, the answer is 7 and 13 twentieths. This, remember, is the most correct, but this is also correct. 
So this is just in simplest form. All right, so simplest form. All right, now what you're gonna be doing is working on your adding and subtracting fraction sheet. When you get to problems um, five and eight, you might want to go ahead and take those improper fractions and make them mixed numbers. I will have a video to show you how to do that if you would like to check it out.